Hey guys, Mike here at Amish Tutorials, and welcome to part one in a series of how to model uh, low poly hand tools. Okay, so we're going to start simple by modeling this hammer right here, and it's uh, as you can see, it's nothing special. And we're going to start off with that one. Okay, so we're going to model it, we're going to UV it, and we're going to texture it. All right, so I'm going to take a polygon cube here, I'm going to hit W, move that over. Switch views, so go to my four view, and then in this view right here, I'm gonna pull that up and pull it over to the side and hit R to scale that up until we roughly have the shape of the steel piece of the hammer. Okay, then we're gonna go to insert edge loop option box. We're gonna go with multiple edges, but we're only gonna set one for the reason that it will then automatically be exactly in the middle. Okay, there we go. Now, now that we have that, I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard. And I'm going to right click and go to Edge. And I'm going to select all the vertical edges, like so. And then what I'm going to do is go to Edit Mesh and Bevel. Now, that's a bit strong, so I'm going to pull the fraction down a bit to, let's say, 0 0.2. Looks about right. And with that set, I'm going to right click, go to vertex, drag select all the vertices in the middle, hit R to flare them out just a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to go into this view, hit 4 for wireframe mode, drag select these guys. And with R selected, I'm going to kind of make that distance in the middle smaller so as you can see i have pulled them out in this direction and now i'm going to do the same here and hopefully i just get the vertices that i need as you can see i got a little bit too much going on there same here actually that's the one i need and that's the one i do not need all right and I'm going to do the same there. So I'm just going to push that out a little. All right. So that will give us um, the approximate shape for our hammer. And then we're going to right click and go to face, select the top, shift select the bottom, go to edit mesh and extrude. We're going to hit R to scale that in just slightly. And then we're going to pull on this handle to pull it up until we get this. Okay, so that will be the uh, shape for our hammer head, if you will. Now we're going to create the wood section. For that, we'll take a polygon cylinder and we're going to bring down the uh, division count to 10 because we want to keep it low poly. And I'm going to set the caps to zero. All right, now I don't need the top cap here as it's going to be hugging the steel, if you will. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to right click, go to object mode, select it, hit E to rotate, and hold down J to snap it until we're at 90 degrees. Okay. Let's hit R to stretch it out and then scale the whole thing down a bit. Have a look from this view. Hit W to pull that up until we are pretty much centered there. Yep. And we're going to move that in just a bit. Right click, go to vertex, take these and pull it out to the end. And now that we have all that, just to make sure that we have absolute symmetry, we know that this guy is in the center of our grid line and this guy as well. So we should be good there. As far as height is concerned, that's a different story. So we're going to right click in object mode. Go to Modify Center Pivot. Then from this view, we're going to hold down X and pull it down. Same here. All right. So now we know that it's centered correctly. Now from our top view, we're going to select this guy and we don't want it to be that thick. So we're going to hit R and we're going to kind of flatten it in a bit like so. And then we're going to tweak the shape. 
So we're going to go into this view. And we can drop our image a little bit if we want. Hit W, bring it down. But it's not such a complicated shape, so we should be good. Okay. We're going to go to Insert Edge Loop, do Single Setting. I'll add one, let's say, here. And I'll do one at the end to hold that shape. I'll do one, let's say, around here. And one at the end here. Okay. Q on my keyboard. I'm going to right click, go to Vertex, drag select these, hit R, and kind of pull that up just a bit. Push this in just a bit. Pull this one out. And then we're good. Okay. Now, like I said, low poly. So just on how low poly you want this to be. If you're going to use this, let's say, for a game or whatnot, um, and I'll just show you, I'll right click and select both. We got uh, a, let's see, a face count of 1600 plus. So that's not bad at all. This could be used in a game, in an animation without any trouble. Okay. Now, I typically want it to be a little bit more high poly. So I'm just going to select this section and I'm going to go to mesh and smooth, which gives us this look. And now we have a poly count of 18. So still not too bad. Okay. All right. Now let's UV this. We're going to take this guy. We're going to go to UV and automatic mapping. Then we're going to go to UV and UV editor. And we're going to stitch these guys together. So right click shell. Hit W to move over. I'm going to right click and go to edge. And I'm going to select all these edges at the end with the exception of actually let's do it this way I'll just give me one sec here trying to get it all in screen so you guys can see it okay that's better all right so I'm going to select these edges here And I'm going to go to move and sew. So the whole thing jumped over. So now I can right click, go to shell. That's the one we did. Hit W, move it over. Right click edge. We're going to repeat the process from top to bottom. That one as well. Hit G to repeat last command. It looks like we missed one. We're good. And let's do that once again. G to repeat. Okay. And that we're going to leave as is. We're going to right click and go to UV. Let's select everything and go to polygon and layout. So we're good. All right. Now let's take our steel section here. Select that. Right click object mode, go to UV and automatic projection, and then to UV and UV editor. And let's stitch this stuff together. Okay. Right click shell, W to move over. Let's right click and go to edge. So that's going to connect up. So polygon move and sew. G to repeat last command. G to repeat last command. We'll do that section there. Let's see where we want that. That section, nope, we're not going to do that. Right click at a shell. Let's move this over so we can see what's going on. Right click edge. So we're going to leave all that. There we go. We'll do that one there. And then we got these guys. We're not going to connect those. Those are good. Okay. So right click UV, drag select all of that, and go to layout. Okay. Nice. All right. So next bit we're going to do is we're going to start texturing. So I'm going to start with the wood part. Right click object mode. 
right click assign new material let's go with the Lambert hit our checkered box select file select the folder and I am gonna look for uh, let's see a wood texture so just give me one sec while I find that Hi right, guys so um, let's see for our wood we got um, this option here let's see we'll take this one I like that a bit better okay we're gonna hit this uh, checkered sphere here so now we have a directional issue in the sense that I don't like how the uh, the flow of the wood if you will so with that selected I'm gonna go to UV and UV editor I'm going to right click at a shell. I'm going to select all of that and I'm going to start to rotate it. And actually I'll hit E and freely rotate it until I have the direction that I like, which is probably something more like that. And then I'm going to hit W and move that over. And let's just have a look and see if that looks okay. And I think it does especially for something so low poly all right so let's minimize that then we're going to go in and i'm going to select this guy right click assign new material lambert check it box file folder on my desktop i have something called scratched steel which looks very nice cool so that's pretty good now if i want to add a little bit more detail what i can do is i can add a bomb map so i'll take this guy in object mode we're going to go and select let's actually delete the history here so edit delete by type history modify freeze transformations all right so let's select the handle. We're going to go to our Lambert. We're going to go down to bump map. Now, normally I would uh, transfer this image to a black and white image, but we're going to just use it as is. So we're going to go to file folder and I'm going to reuse the same dirty wood, but now as a bump map, you can see that the bump is way too deep. So I'm going to go to this bump here. Let's start by bringing that down to about 0 0.25, which is looking at it, not bad. And then we're going to repeat that process for our steel. We're going to go to the bump map section, select file, go to our file and go to scratched steel. There we go. And then we're going to decrease the bump depth to about 0 0.25, which should be quite okay. All right. So let's get rid of our image here. And what we'll quickly do is set up a scene. So let's take a polygon plane, hit R, kind of stretch that out, hit W and pull that down like so. And we'll go to create lights and let's do um, an area light. Pull that up, hit T on my keyboard so I can kind of aim it. And I'll hit seven on my keyboard so I can actually see the effect of the light. Okay, we'll do an intensity of five. Go down a little bit. I'll change no decay into linear decay. In shadows, I'm going to use ray trace shadows, which is good. And then I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate this light. Pull it over to this end. But in this case, I'm going to turn off the shadows and I'm going to lower the intensity to about, let's say, two. And Again, linear decay, that's fine. And we'll copy that once again, control D, kind of move that back. And that one we'll do 
0 0.5 on the intensity. Okay. Let's set up our hammer for rendering. We're going to go to render settings. This is something that I received to check out, so don't worry about that. Uh, let's go into render settings, which is, nope, not that one. This one, yep. Mental ray. Yeah, there we go. In my common tab, I'm going to use HD 1080. There we go. Um, I'm going to go down to render options and turn off default lighting. In my quality tab, let's increase the overall quality to about 1.5. Lighting quality is good. I got my advanced settings checked which allows me to go to legacy settings and turn on global illumination. All good. That's pretty much it. All right. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to hit render and I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, guys. Well, here's our final render. Uh, turned out okay, I think, especially for a low poly model. So uh, that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'll be back with more in this series. Uh, a few guys that are uh, patrons to my site, uh, you will find uh, this model and all the texture files in the shared drive. And if you want to become a patron and support my site, you will find details below how to do that. That said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time.